Thank you, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Dead flies cause the ointment of, of the apothecary to stink. That's a verse of scripture that Reverend Kasali has been speaking about for the past four weeks. And as expected, many boys and girls, brothers and sisters, brethren all over, have been asking questions. We didn't think it was right to answer these questions in private because we imagine that you may have those same questions. So for the next couple of minutes, probably an hour, we'll be listening to Reverend Kasali answer questions around dead flies. To the glory of God, can we give him a round of applause as we welcome him this evening? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? It's an honor to be here again. <laughs> I'm glad you have your I enjoyed the very last time I did, so it's an honor to be here again. I thought we'll start with the verse of scriptures that you've been using. Yes. So two of them I, I want to start with. Yes. Ecclesiastes 10.1. Yes. It says, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savo. Yes. And then on and on. But there's a second scripture you've also referred to, Song of Solomon. Yes. 2.15. Yes. The King James Version is a little funny. Yes. It says, take us the foxes. Yes. The little foxes that spoil the vines. Yes. Please, before we start, before we start answering questions, can we dig into the scriptures? Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Telu, for having me again. Now, those scriptures simply explain the place of little things mm. that can cause major close of failure in the life of people. Many times we look at the big issues in our lives to succeed, to make, to make money. But it says in that Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it tells us clearly, so does a little folly. The word folly means foolishness, yeah. something tiny, yeah. something that you and I will consider insignificant. It said as tiny as they could be, they could be mighty. They could devastate somebody's character, somebody's reputation. It says a little folly can damage a man in reputation of honor and wisdom. That's amazing, isn't it? That no matter how great you are, don't ignore those little, little things around you. Little lies, yeah, little slander, little gossip, little sleep, a little folding of hands, little things. So it says little, little foxes. There are some tiny things that we do as Christians and as human beings that we probably ignore. And those things can cause us tomorrow, can, can affect us, can hinder us from making progress, can, can stop our promotion. Honor. You know, you know, lying, you know, little things that you and I play around with every day. Not keeping your word, you get the point? Lateness to events and meetings. They just know that if you put this person up there, it's going to come late to board meetings. You know what? We don't want such a person around us, you know? You know, even the way you eat and you smack. Little things like that. People just know, don't try him, don't give it to her. And so, the, the Lord laid that on my heart, that it's important for me to teach our members and our Christians in our church the place of those tiny little things that we play around with mm. may be the reason why we've not been lifted, elevated, or promoted. That's it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> now, be before I ask any question, what, yes. as, as you were explaining that, my mind was drawn to a situation, I think that happened in Nairobi. Yes. A young lady that had made a careless comment on social media. Wow. Who was appointed into government and eventually her appointment was withdrawn. Will you consider comments on social media little things? Oh, yes. No, but comments on social media, in my opinion, will yeah. not be little things. They are mighty things. They are great things. Because again, quite a lot of people are going to listen or read that comment. And that comment may haunt you tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe racist comment. Maybe some tribal comment. Maybe some comment about um, your preference. It's not everything that you think that you must speak about. Share, restrain yourself. We've got to learn to sometimes honor silence. Silence mm -hmm. can be honorable. but just, just be quiet and say, I don't have to say something on this subject. Social media, you'll be shocked at how people go back to find out who you are. Listen, whenever I do interviews yeah. for my own staff, one of the things I tell my 
HR to do for me is to always, always go to the social media handles of our ah. prospective staff. I'm telling you. Ah. And you'll be shocked at how many people we've had to say, we don't want them here. Based on the things we've heard them say on social media, their dressing, their outlook, their comments on life, on God, on Christ, on faith. I, said, no, I don't want that kind of person because at that point, that's who you are. Social media, as good as it can be, can actually tell me who you are. Yeah. Thank you so much Love for that. Team. And I, I think it's a really good place to start, especially for young people. Yes. Social media is not just a little thing. It can be a big thing. Yeah. Now let's get into this. I've got three questions that look alike. Yeah. But um, I think they also refer to what is maybe a little paramount in the minds of people. Yes. I'm, I'm going to read all three of them. I suspect they're from three different people. Are there different types of sin, sir, like little sin and great sin? <laughs> Please, could you take that first? Take that one alone. Well, <laughs> are there different kinds of sins? Yes. Sin is sin. Yeah. The person I want to def define sin. In the doctrine of sin, which is called amatology in theology, okay. sin has different names. Iniquity, transgression of God's law, sin, flaws, errors. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of faults, weight. There are different kinds of sins in scriptures. Mm -hmm. And whether we like it or not, there's what you and I would call the heavier sin, mm -hmm. for Christ mentioned as well. It's called the unpardonable sin. He said, I do not ask you to go and pray for somebody that commits the unpardonable sin. Yeah. You get the point now? And there are those that you and I will call the sin of commission. He that knows how to do good and do it not to him, it's a sin. Sin basically means transgression of a law. Okay. Now, if, when it comes to God's law, it becomes iniquity. When it comes to man's law, it becomes sin. It could be in your house, a rule at okay. home. So you tell your son, you tell your daughter, you tell your guest, you've committed a sin against this house. Why? In this house, we, we put off our shoes before we come in because it's an Islamic house. So when you don't do that, they feel you've just committed a sin. That's against what the word said. Against that household okay. based on their laws okay. and their rules. Now, when it comes to God, yes. when it comes to God, in the Old Testament, the definition of sin and the New Testament, uh, under the New Covenant of Grace, is similar. But with grace, it covers quite a lot of our flaws. Because God observed that if he were to mark sin, Psalm 130 no verse 2, would. no one would stand. Yeah. So what God did was to give us some grace in advance. To say, as you guys fall here and there, and falter here and there, I would help you out. I would use grace to cover your iniquities. But... Having said that, mm -hmm. you've got to accept grace. For, for again, if you do not accept the grace, you are condemned already. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. says, he that believeth not is damned already. So mm -hmm. that person is going to hell. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. So that's a sin of unbelief. People have asked me, what sin will lead men to hell? That's the primary one, sin of unbelief. Most unbelievers will go to hell, not for committing fornication or adultery for, not for in their heart that's not sin a man that doesn't know christ does not see sleeping around as sinful except when it comes to a law of a land yeah. but for not accepting christ yeah. is damned already now for yeah. you and i that are born again that have accepted christ we've been removed from that damnation of not believing christ mm -hmm. now here we now start understanding that in Christ, we shouldn't do certain things. Yes. It's when we now start doing those things that we call them sins as Christians. Mm. For Christians do commit sins. That's why it says in 1 John chapter 2, I write to these things that you should not sin. However, if, truth you, one, if you sin, yeah. you have an advocate with the Father. Or like unbelievers committing the sin of unbelief, mm. Christians commit the sin of fornication, adultery, lying, slander. So if you do sin, we have an advocate for the Father, Jesus the Son. Please, exactly. Who would then say, hey, forgive them, Daddy, this is my blood. Forgive them, Daddy, this is my blood. Forgive them, Daddy, this is my blood. So yes, there are little things and there are great things. Little because to us, there are things that we do subconsciously. Let me tell you one scripture that helps me to understand little sin and, and heavy sin. Okay. In Luke chapter 12, it says God's law and God's word is like this. A man that knows what to do and does not do, does not do it. The Bible says he will be beaten with many stripes. Why? Knowledge. But the man that does not know and yet still commits things worthy. Verse 46 to 48, Luke chapter 12, verse 46 to 48. But commits things worthy of stripes mm -hmm. shall be beaten 
with few stripes. Wait a minute. Few stripes, many stripes. Yeah. Heavy sin, smaller sin. So the difference between the heavy sinner and lighter one is knowledge. Because yeah. I do things that I don't even know whether yeah. that is wrong. But ignorance but is not the excuse. The moment you know. The moment you know and you seek to do them, yeah. they become heavier. Thank you so much, sir. Now I'll take those two questions together. Yeah. Are there different types of um, lying? Oh. So, um, is lying a sin that can cause one to go to hell? L lying yeah. is a sin. Lying, you see, lying, uh, I have to explain this very well because this is a very, very delicate point that I have to be careful. I don't want people to now hold me tomorrow. Lying means to be untrue, yeah. to, to make false statements. Yeah. Where were you yesterday? I was in Lagos. Where you were in Abba? That's lying. I just told a lie. For whatever reason, I just told a lie. Lying is wrong. Lying is morally, morally. Everywhere in the world, without scriptures, lying is morally wrong. All cultures and all faiths, all, re yeah. all religions agree yeah. that not telling the truth yeah. is wrong. Yeah. However, will I go to hell as a Christian when I tell a lie? No. That's not in the scriptures. In Revelation 21, verse 7 and 8, when he said, all liars will go to hell. He wasn't speaking about a Christian that tells a lie. He was speaking about a, a liar, a, a compulsive liar, an unbeliever, because of the unbelief and their damnation, the whole monger, all mongering and everything. In other words, like a pastor said once, and I like that pastor when he said it. He said, a, a liar tells lies. Because it's a liar. Yeah. You're not a liar because you told a lie. Yeah. So you're not a liar because you told a lie, but yeah. you, you lie because you're a liar. Because it's your nature. And we found that in, in John chapter 8, verse 44. When Jesus was ex describing Satan, the devil, Jesus said he, he was a murderer from the beginning. He's a liar and the father of lies. Oh, lies. That when he speaks the lie, he speaks of his own nature. The word nature means that's just what he will do. He just can't find a way to say the truth. And it's not just in what you say, but in what you mean to say. Because if you look at what, mm. what the devil said in the beginning, you shall not die, but mm. that's not what he meant. So lying is beyond words, but more of intent. What he meant to say was to, ah. to kill them. So he lied, and that's what he called deceit and hypocrisy. So most people that are deceitful are liars. So even if a Christian comes to you and says, hey, you look good, you just told a lie. If, if, if that person starts to get money from you, you look good today, can I get some money from you? You just told a lie. Absolutely. So, because there's deceit behind the statement. So, and, and that's what the devil does. The devil is a master deceiver. But the Bible calls him the deceiver. So the moment someone runs his or her life on deceit, that acts, or those actions rather, uh, it's awful of lies. That's what the Bible calls that. That person has left the faith, may go to hell. May go to hell. Thank you, sir. Now, a quick follow-on question. Before yes. you clap, before you clap, a quick follow-on question. Can, can someone be a compulsive liar because they're possessed? Can you be possessed by the spirit of lying such that every time you open your mouth, it's a lie that comes out? And even when you are then confronted with it, you're sorry, but you don't seem to be able to help yourself. Well, the Bible, you see, the Bible speaks about lying spirits. Yeah. In First Kings, I think, 20th chapter, when God said, who shall go to deceive Ahab to go to war? This spirit came up, that spirit came up. Then one came up and said, I will go. Yeah. How? I'll be a lying spirit. God said, oh yeah, you will succeed because Ahab loves to hear lies and, you know, believe lies. So, I don't know about the spirit of lying, but I just know demons are all liars. All demons are liars. Build them up, whatever they want to call the demon, they're all liars. Now, can a Christian be a composite? Oh, yes. Because if you're obsessed with demons, maybe not, um, maybe not even possessed, because a Christian cannot be possessed with demons. You know? But again, as unbelievers, unbelievers tell lies because that's what they will do. So for me, mm. the art of lying compulsively as someone without Christ is natural. It's normal. It's normal. There's, there's nothing it's, abnormal exactly. So some people feel bad. Some don't feel that bad. They don't feel what was a big deal. After all, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm only protecting myself. I want to get something from them. So we have to understand that lying for, 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 for scriptures or in scriptures is very heavy. Very heavy. Because God deliberately yeah. chose the word truth to define his own son. Jesus says, yeah. I am the way, the truth. 
Can you imagine? Yeah. Epitomized it, embodiment of truth. So I am the truth. Mm. So for you to know that truth before heaven is serious. And the opposite of truth is lying. So we have to be, take that serious a bit. Christians don't understand that truth means even in the intent. For Bible says in Psalm 51, thou desirest truth in the, the innermost inner part of your heart. So God looks within us to know if what we're saying and what we're doing is mm. we're doing them truthfully or deceitfully. The moment you have good deeds done deceitfully becomes a lie. And that's a problem we have in church. Even if your deeds externally seem yes. to be good in the yes. sight of men, yes. but inwardly and internally, when God looks at you, God finds deceit, God finds falsehood, God finds hypocrisy, God calls that lies. And that was why Jesus was angry with the Pharisees. He said, you hypocrites. Because they give it front. Exactly, and they, yeah. exactly. And, and that's what we are. He said, you hypocrites. I don't like what you guys are doing. You wear a different face, but within you guys are hmm. very terrible. You guys are very horrible. So God hates deceit and lies. Because in God's presence, there can be no lie. In devil's presence, there can be no truth. We need to understand those two Thank parallels. You, sir. The parallels. <laughs> to get more of these videos, just click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified once the video is uploaded. Listen to the vlog. I like it to subscribe. Subscribe and guess what? Subscribe again. Thank you very much. I'll see you there.